In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Garrett GT3076R turbo. Watch my video GT35R disassembly to learn how to take this turbo apart. First off, make sure that the pin and cage clearance is pretty tight, and then you want to line up the cage in the bearing housing so that when you press the pin in, it goes directly in the cage without any problems. I'll link to all the parts that we use in this rebuild in the description box. Put the piston ring seal on the front collar piece and then put oil underneath the piston ring seal to keep it well lubricated. Then you can install the bearing housing o-ring inside of the pocket. Sometimes you do need to stretch this o-ring to get it to fit properly. Then you can install the seal plate just be careful you notice where the piston ring seal is so that when you snap it in that you're compressing the seal and not bending it. Add Loctite to the screws and don't put the Loctite as high on the screws as we did in this video. Just put it on the lower end of the screws. Then tighten the screws with an Allen key and if you want to get them even tighter you can use a fourth inch ratchet. Install the rear piston ring seal. When you do this make sure you put the gapped end over the shaft first. It just helps to go in a lot easier and then I usually use a pick to help spread the gap a little bit and work one side in at a time until I get it to slide down evenly. If you don't do it this way often you can bend the seal and cause a lot of problems. If you bend the seal then the turbo won't spin right and it will eventually cause the seal to fuse against the shaft. When you get ready to install a shaft make sure you use a washer underneath the bearing housing. This will help give you the ability to spin the cartridge as you press the shaft in. This is where a lot of people make the mistake of not doing this correctly because they don't spin the bearing housing as they are pressing the shaft in. Spinning the bearing housing allows the rear seal to seat while you press it in. If you don't spin the bearing housing as you press the shaft in, then the rear seal will catch on the heat shield or the bearing housing and bend up against the shaft and cause a big mess. If that happens you usually have to replace the bearing housing, the shaft, and the rear seal. When you're pressing it in if you hit a spot where it feels tight what you have to do for that is you spin it clockwise then counterclockwise and get it to free up. If you can't get it to free up from spinning it then you need to press the shaft back out just a little bit so that it will spin freely again and then you can press it back in again. If you press the shaft all the way out then you'll need to disassemble the whole turbo all over again and reassemble it. Before you take the whole turbo apart you can mark the compressor wheel, the shaft, and the nut to retain the original balance. We have a balancer on hand so we balance the assembly before assembling this turbo. Add Loctite to the compressor nut and line up your original balance marks or if you're in my case I just line up the balance marks that I had made to keep the original position of the compressor wheel, the nut, and the shaft when the turbo is balanced. Don't forget to install a bearing housing o-ring that goes between the bearing housing and the plate and then there's also an o-ring between the compressor housing and the compressor plate on the TO4E style compressor housing. The TO4S didn't normally have one, but however, I am able to machine the TO4S plate for a bearing housing o-ring to work with that, so I usually do that on my own builds. I'll leave all the links for the products that I use in this build in the description box. And if you want us to do this build for you, you can always contact us through the email below. 